Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. Um, I've been promising to do the unboxing for this guitar. And while I did fail to get this out on time to you, because I started this video a couple of days ago, and uh, for somehow it got corrupted. So I have to start from scratch. So we're going to roll with this one today, no matter what we have. <laughs> what we get happens sometimes here in the life of YouTube. Anyhow, I'm going to put the unboxing of this right here so you can at least see it. And um, we're going to go over this Fesley um, guitar, 22 fret. And as you can see, it's kind of a super strat style, maybe even kind of a dinky style in between there. Um, it's, a, it's a really decent guitar for the money. And that's a term that I don't like to use is for the money. I don't like normally to use that term, but I'm going to use it on this one because... It's inexpensive, and in the terms of beginner guitars, it could be a hit or miss in that aspect. And we're going to go over some of the reasons why that is today. Now, if you follow the Bald Shredders channel at all, you know that he did a review on these, and, and he got an outstanding one, and he's a really good player, and he really shows off um, what it's capable of. And if you haven't watched his video, I suggest you go and do that. Because... um. You do get a lot for the money on these, but as with almost any budget guitar, sometimes they have their quirks or sometimes there may be a problem. Now, if you're good with guitars and good with guitar hot riding, this is really going to be up your alley because it has a lot going for it. Um, but if you're a beginner, while it can be a fantastic guitar out of the box, it might not be too. So let's dive into that. First of all, boxing this thing, well, unboxing this thing, what I noticed right away is it came with an amazing gig bag. I'm going to grab that for you. Really nice gig bag. I mean, this is, this is probably one of the better gig bags that I've seen come with an inexpensive guitar. Inexpensive, we're talking around $100 $38 for this particular color. And that's what they base their prices on with Fesley's, the color of the guitar. So different colors are different prices. Although their coloring price, their prices with the coloring doesn't make any sense because their um, sunburst um, faded is one of the most cheap or one of the cheapest and it's the hardest to do. So, which is really strange. But I believe your hot pink or I should say pastel pink is uh, one of the most expensive. And it's, there's no really um, reason why the finishes should cost uh, more or less when you have the same guitar. There's nothing special going on there, I assure you. But they're still reasonably priced, no matter which one you look at. So this is the gig bag. Very nice gig bag. If you were going to buy this gig bag, you can expect to pay $30, $35 bucks for this. Sure, very nice. Um, it's very thick. It's padded. It has the uh, little... Uh, feet here on the bottom so it's not tearing through anything when you sit it down up in the corner which you shouldn't be doing um but let's get to the guitar the main part which you guys are wondering about so when i review a guitar um especially with the drum building background that i have um i look the first thing i look at is finish and construction so the first thing i immediately was drawn to was the cut of the body um, the edges around the side, how well they were round over, uniform, things like that. And the finish of the guitar itself. This guitar's finish is simply beautiful and amazing. Um, it's honestly the best part of this guitar. Um, it is poplar, it's not mahogany, which really is, doesn't make a difference. It does have a decent weight to it. Weighs in at about 8.6, 8.7 pounds the way you see it. Well, that's actually with the whammy bar on it. Yes, it does have a whammy bar. And what's really cool about the whammy bar is it's a pop-in. That's right. It is a pop-in bar. Positive lock stays where you put it. At least this one does. And keep that in mind. When I look at these guitars, I'm telling you about the particular one that I received. Are they all going to be like this? Probably not. Um, usually budget guitars aren't. Usually they're all over the place. But and this guitar, upon first inspection, quick overall inspection, is really nice. So there's no gripes. The neck fits the body perfectly. There's no excessive gaps. Nothing like that. 
So the, another thing I, I immediately go to is the pots. We turn them to see if they're gritty or grindy or smooth or they all have the same tension when you turn them. They do. They work great. The bridge itself is a really nice looking bridge and we'll talk about that in a second. It's um it's not a cheap looking bridge by any means and like I said it does have a pop in trim bar and I haven't seen that at this price point yet. There may be a few out there but I haven't had one in the studio yet. Then we're going to move to the neck. Um, really nice Canadian maple neck. Very smooth C shape with a slight taper from here to here. Are they all like that? I don't know. But uh, a slight taper to it. Nice flat fretboard. And it does have medium jumbo uh, frets with a really incredible fret job. So, so far it's sounding really good, right? Um, yeah, and so far it is. Now when we go to the back and we go inside, and I'm going to put some pictures up here for you. When we go to the back and we go inside of this, you're going to notice that it actually has a brass claw that's holding the springs. And that was a nice touch to see. Um, I don't know, I can, I can see the reasoning behind it um, because it's brass um, and resonation and holding tune. Um, does it work? Does it function like it should? I don't know, but it, just a touch like that... Um, gives me a little faith that they really kind of wanted to put out a product that was, well, good kind of where it counts. Another thing you'll find in this picture here is your trem block itself is quite a bit thicker than usually you see on a budget guitar, which means your sustain is going to be a bit, little bit better. Now, I would have loved to have seen a brass trem block on this, but at this price point, I can't expect that but seeing a larger one definitely does help also it is finished with a nice black um a, a nice black uh neck plate here and um the back covers are super nice and just so you guys know if you get these and they appear to be scratched up it has two layers of film to pull off and what that reveals is a nice these things are almost if you look at the side cuts on these look like almost like a black plexiglass. They're nice and shiny. They're beautiful. Now, I did put these gold screws in, um, and simply because the ones that come in are black, they're a little small, and I believe over time that they would strip out quickly. So I put a little larger oversized gold ones in. I had, these are by Ibanez. I buy them by the bag. And uh, same thing on the electronic cover here. If we look at the back of the neck, it's a nice maple neck. It's got some flaming on the sides, and I'll try to get you a picture of that. And we got some nice figuring up top. And as you can see, we got some vintage style tuners. So black hardware. Um, but what are the downsides to this? Well, we're going to talk about that too. Where did they cut costs on this guitar? Well, the electronics for one. Um, they're not the greatest, but they're not the worst. Not that they sound bad because they don't sound bad. This one, however had a wire that was off um, inside a ground that was off and I only had sound in four positions not the fifth position so um, when I went to use my um, my bridge pickup there was dead there was nothing so I got inside and I quickly found that there was a wire that had um, been kind of poorly soldered but all the other soldering was good so one, uh, it literally took as long as it took to heat up the soldering iron touch it back in business and ready to rock and roll. But what I quickly discovered after tuning this up was I had immense fret buzz on every string. And we're automatically, we think the worst, right? What do we got? Unlevel frets, what is it? So I immediately didn't think unlevel frets, but I checked them first. And what I found is the fret job on this is really good. I mean, really, really good. I didn't find any high spots, nothing, so the frets were definitely not the problem. So what could it be? Well, of course, the last thing I ever do is a truss rod adjustment. Um, that's the last thing that I do. And this is very nice because these come with a card, and I'll put a picture of it here, that give you the setup specs of how it came out of the factory. Yeah, Quality Control actually checks these and sets them up to a specific, um, to a specific whatever their settings are. And that's how it leaves the factory, and it gets stamped what they are for your string string height and um, your action, which is really cool. So I had a gauge of what it should be to go by. I quickly noticed that 
um, the neck was really uh, kind of concave, or should I say, I'm not concave, uh, bowed, and it was out of spec a lot, and there's a reason for that. So this guitar was made in about 2021, at least that's when it was inspected, and they sit in a box in this bag, and they ship, they ship them. This is the downfall, and I hope Vesley listens to this because I think they could have an incredible, inexpensive guitar um, if they take this into account. It sits in the box with no support under the neck whatsoever. So what happened is, of course, we don't know what the temperatures are in these warehouses or where they're sitting or what state they're in or what have you. So in the time that it sat and the wood had changed, it gave, well, a bit of an arch to the fretboard and created fret buzz across the whole fretboard. So with a quick adjustment of the fret, the uh, truss rod, and I say quick adjustment, it was very quick, but it was a pretty big adjustment. So we always know that guitars get acclimated and we have to, um, we have to adjust our truss rods. A lot of the times after we get a guitar and they're in your own environment, you keep them for a week, two, three, and you have to go back and go, whoa, something's out and buzzing. And, or, or just so your actions even changed. Well, that's usually acclimation and your truss rod needs adjustment. So no different here. I went back in and this is really how I know the guitar was kind of inspected right because with a quick turn of the truss rod, it went right back into spec. And to their specifications, what they set it at, and that was cool. So from there on, I set it to my own and I dropped it a bit lower because I do like a lower action and it's perfect now. But out of the box, it wasn't playable like that. It was, it, it was, the fret, fret buzz was so bad, it sounded like something was loose in the bridge. That's what it really sounded like. And at first I was like, whoa, what could that be? But it was definitely um, truss rod adjustment. So we got that nice now, action set perfectly. We have these nice vintage style tuners. They do hold tune very well. They stay in tune. What I'll tell you, if you get this guitar, change the strings because the strings that come on it are horrible. Um, I actually run these Donner 9-42s. In my opinion, these are superior to um, Ernie Ball Slinkies. Um, I use them on everything now because they're right around $14, $15 for a box of five. And um, they're always on hand, and I haven't broke a string yet. They, I play them all the time, and they seem to always um, perform for me. So... If you want, give them a check out. I don't get paid nothing for it, but it's just really cool. I just like to pass that on to people because I know strings can get costly, especially if you're like me and you're swapping parts back and forth and you're always stringing up with new strings. Definitely worth it. Pickups. Well, we're going to get to that in another video on how with how it sounds. But let's just say they're adequate and they work. I wasn't getting any um, unwanted feedback or anything like that. It does have a stratty kind of sound, but a lot more punch. Um, when you want it to with this humbucker at the bridge. And I did have some tuning instability with the center two strings, and that is because, um, as you can see, well, you'll see in the pictures, that it has a black string tree here, but it didn't have anything on the center two. So what I did is I had some brass string rollers, and I put those on here, and now the tuning is spot on. It's perfect. It's staying and it really made a big difference in playability. So now, and one, a big gripe I have is, I don't know why they do this with any guitar. and Nobody really ever talks about it. They ship with these bell, and you'll see it here, bell-shaped strap buttons. What a recipe for disaster. Designed, in my opinion, for the strap to slip off. So what I like to do is I like to upgrade to these. These are a uh, black nickel. And uh, they're uh, for, for a strap lock or a strap washer, if you like, positive lock. And you don't have to worry about it slipping off. With the bell-shaped one that was on this, it would even slip off with, uh, with a strap washer. And that's not good. Um, another quirk that I had is the knob here. Um, why it works well, well, it's very positive. The top slipped off on me. I have changed it. It was black. I put a white one on there and that has went away. Um, but the overall quality of the guitar, especially the bones of this guitar, are outstanding. And I think this guitar is good for a beginner. If you get one that doesn't need the truss rod adjustment or a quick solder inside, I think then, or 
you want to take it to a guitar tech and have them do a quick setup on it and give it a, give it a thorough checkout, I think you're uh, you're good to go there. And like I said, the Bald Shredder got one that was perfect out of the box. And that's going to happen because, well, mine had a couple of flukes, but I don't think it's anything that was malicious or or a quality control issue coming out of the factory. I think maybe somebody did a, a bad solder job. It wasn't noticed or it didn't separate till after the guitar was shipped. And um, it was definitely in spec at one point and came out. And I, like I said, I believe that's due to the way they put it in the box without um, anything under the neck. But it ships nice and safely because it is in a nice gig bag when it's shipped and it's wrapped in plastic and it, it's got a very good first impression on me. So if you know how to do that stuff, great. If not, you might want to pass or you might want to get one and take your chances or, you know, just be prepared to take it to your guitar tech real quick in your, your local uh, guitar shop and say, look, could you do a quick setup of this? I really like this guitar. Just a quick setup. They literally put it in spec very quickly if they know what they're doing and if they're not price gougers it will be very inexpensive because i literally had this thing up and running within 15 minutes and ready to rock and roll and that includes the soldering the longest part of that was waiting for the soldering iron to heat up so keep that in mind um stays in tune nice it sounds good like i said we'll do another video with a sound comparison because i have upgrades planned for this and that is um, DiMarzio, wherever it is. I got some, these are not the ones, but I have some DiMarzio pickups that are going to go in the bridge position and in the neck position up here. So that's going to be really cool. Stick around. We'll see the sound comparison for that versus the stock pickups. They're not a real high output pickup, but they're very nice, articulate sounding pickup. I think they sound good and I'm not getting any unwanted feedback from it. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. Um, another thing I want to note is if you read the reviews on Amazon on these, if you see a couple people saying this is not a full-size guitar, it is not what they advertise. It is a full-size guitar, guys. You're getting a guitar that is 22 frets, not, um, not 24 frets. And that makes a big difference. It's not a gem. And, you know, that, that it gives you another guitar that's about an inch longer would be like a gem. And, um, yeah, an inch can make a difference, right, ladies? So, of course, visually, it's going to look different. Um, but I assure you, the body size and everything on this is the exact same size as my two gems. So keep that in mind. It is a full-size guitar. Although, if you add a couple more frets, you're going to move the, 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 the uh, fretboard back a little bit, and it's going to appear to be longer. But the body itself is almost identical to my gem, with exception of the sharp points. Uh, my gem's a little more pointed. Fast, very slim, flat fretboard, um, like a Wizard 3 neck. I would compare this to a Wizard 3, but it seems to be faster. I'm not sure what they used on the back, if it's a poly or what have you, or sanded just to a smooth finish, but it's a very fast neck. One of the fastest that I have, honestly, um, so that keep that in mind too. So quality-wise, Excellent bones, could use some improvement. Um, we're going to do some electronic upgrades, but I really like this guitar. Make sure you hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the updates on this because it's getting some hot rodding done to it. And I only do that to guitars that I think are worth it. Um, build quality, the build itself of the neck and the wood and the body, it's there. I won't even worry about upgrading this trim system because it works. Maybe, maybe put a brass block in it if I can find one. Um, other than that, if it's, if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. Um, electronics definitely will get changed. Not that they're bad, but I just want something that's a little more stout, if that makes sense. Because I think this might be my good, my bang around guitar and for my main studio guitar for practice. Um, so, I mean, that's got to say something. Is it the best guitar in the world? Nope, but it's better than a lot of guitars that cost a lot more than this. So keep that in mind. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And remember, it's rock and roll that makes the world go round. Peace.